Hello everyone, here for another daily with 8-Rack. And just <laughs> really questioning my opener right now. I am on the draw and I have three precision discard spells, so... Uh. I think it's wise to keep. I, you know, as I always say, I really hate keeping one landers, but if you have three and you're on the draw, I mean, it's it's hard to argue. So I don't know. I suppose we'll keep. Just pray, draw a land. My first two draws, I have two chances to do it, and then I start getting really behind. Well, that, that'll sort of do. <laughs> it kind of buys me another turn. So, polluted delta, I don't know. Could be Esper. This is probably Spell Pierce. Or he's just, yeah, he's cracking. Okay. Oh, it's that new, uh, it's that new twin list, I believe. Is it? Or is it just, uh, is he just trying out? I believe it was the twin list, right, that ran Jason the side, so maybe he's trying it in the main for his uh, Jessica control list or something, that's my guess. Um, so I'm thinking Electrolyze. Yeah, Electrolyze seems right. I, I don't think he's going to get a chance to get to this Jace between uh, all the discard and the fact he only has two lands and I'm going to, if I take this draw, you know, draw a spell. Even if he gets it at three, he probably won't get to four, I don't know. Anyway, uh, and I have tons of other discard to bait these, so Electrolyze seems right. I guess, uh, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I mean, I suppose I should consider Lightning Bolt for Pack Rat, but mm, I don't know. Swamp Please, or any land will do. Except for Dakmore, thank god. Okay, um, so he'll probably leak this, I suppose. At which point he'll cast another one and then just get two cards out of his hand. Yep. Now, do I want to go for the Jace right now? I kind of do. Like, while I have the chance to guaranteed get it. What does Jace even do? So it's like a tiny fact for fi factor fiction every turn, which I don't want. Um, mm -hmm. So I could go, basically I go for the bolt. I don't know, I, I feel like Thoughtsy is for the Jace is right. Ah, oh, Jason, now he's got the electrolyze. But like I don't have a thoughts, another Thoughtsy to get this out of hand, but... I mean, he'll probably discard it between the wrench mine and the Inquisition. Probably. So yeah, again, I will take Electrolyze. Cantrips are extremely annoying, so... We really, really hate them. Like just one here and there is fine, but... Especially against a deck like this that's built to go long. They really add up, and that's what keeps them um, enough of these, like even just two or three of, of these, and think twice and stuff like that. Um, Gitaxian prone can keep them out of reach for you, you know, and then they start to catch up. They get way ahead, so. I would be more worried about the Jace if he had three land. I would probably take the Jace in that case, but... The fact that he only has two means I can, you know, 
my plan right now is to go take the probably take the spell pairs with this and then wrench mine. Ooh, another land, excellent. Uh, now is also a good time to Liliana, which is, is definitely tempting. I think it makes more sense to go Inquisition range mine and then drop Lily when I'm low on cards. So I can go Lily discard whatever and then back round or yeah. Something like that. Uh, just in case he tries to spell Pierce or something, drop that third land. really gonna at my mercy at this point but I do not underestimate this deck anymore I used to a lot um, they can really they can come back out of nowhere so it's kind of like it's a bit like storm I guess probably because of the cantrips are a lot a lot uh, due to that um, you really should never feel too secure that will cost you games so I definitely try not to do that. So get rid of that Jace and Cryptic probably. And then he's got a bolt. That's what I do. Nope. So he keeps the Jace. Interesting. Not necessarily incorrect. It's probably correct. He, I guess he has a chance of playing it. Well, if I didn't have this Lily. <coughs> and then the Jace would let him recover. Whereas the bolt doesn't really do much right now. Excuse me. So he has Jace and a mystery card in his hand. So this is tricky. Tempting to drop these two, because I don't really want to discard any of them off Lily, but I think it's worth it to do it. So the question is, which one? I'm thinking Pack Rat. I feel like Rack is more reliable here. You know, he could bolt that and then my plan is done, whereas he can't really... He has nothing to destroy the Rack, and I have Lily every turn to... Uh, turn on the damage, plus I have Immutable, and this is a little slower, like it doesn't really start doing much for a couple turns. This uh, does two every turn. So yeah, that, that seems right. Hopefully he will let me play it here. If not, I mean, we're still not in a bad spot. We have Pack Rack, Riot, Mutable, and we can probably just survive. If I do find just off that, if he doesn't draw removal for this, I mean he's he has a good chance of doing that, but still, no, that sucks. See, remand too. I forgot about remand. God, I mean not that I would have taken that play back. It was definitely correct to play that, but um, remand is another one of the pain in the ass cards. So he still has. You and now I can keep both of these. Oh, it's tempting to to still drop the rat and then go that rack, but I don't know. Probably correct to uh, yeah to go for both, I guess. So I have two plans. Yeah, let's do it. So it just says Jace. So if you pulls the Jace, that is a pain. Let me see. Did what kind of card advantage that actually gets him top three? So he gets one or two cards every turn in his hand. Extra cards. So that's that's definitely a huge deal. So that's one reason to keep the pack rat. But this is neutralizing, you know, um, the extra card or two. Pack rat between oh, pack rat and the rack actually I should be able to take out Jace no problem yeah I can do I can do five so that's and there you go that's perfect lines up uh, if I was him I don't know I might have minus two but he would have been at three yeah I don't know anyway uh, so I 
absolutely want him to die. As much as I want to drop this and this right now, I think I can take no chances. I don't want him to minus two and have even a chance of getting out of this, so let's get rid of that Jace right now. Oh shit. Okay, it's still... Is it enough? No, it's not enough. Fuck, I forgot about the plus one thing. Shit. Uh, okay. It still should be fine. Because I have this getting him at one. And this will actually prevent him from using... Yeah, the minus two, so we're okay. Sweet. Works for me. So, um, the thinking here is drop a victim for a pack rat. It's questionable though. I think it's almost definitely correct to take out a removal spell. Question is, for me always, um, do I bring in rat or extraction? I think if it's just a one of, then rat makes more sense, but I don't know. Let's try that. Never bring in these. <laughs> yeah, you have too many ways to keep their hand, hand count high, so. So it looks like, did he ditch white? It looks like uh, he ditched white for black, so I guess he's playing Grixis. I wonder what the black is for, maybe just mystical teachings or even forbidden alchemy or something, I don't know. Anyway, that seems right. Uh, this is pretty terrible. This will be f even. Uh, I, don't, I can't even think of a deck where this is acceptable, really. <laughs> now that I look at this hand, I should do some um, sample hands, uh, sample hand testing for uh, hands where you open with too many racks or too few. It wouldn't be as useful as, uh, you know, testing through the whole game how many you see, I suppose, but... Uh, yeah, I think against uh, a control deck like this, with lots of cantrips, this is just utter crap. So, let's ship it. This is... Uh, not great, but not terrible. Basically, between the crime and hopefully more discard that if I draw it. Mm. And having two pack rats, then hopefully I can just ride a pack rat to victory. But between the, thought, uh, the Thoughtsies and no doubt the removal he has in hand, it's probably not going to work out too well. Sweet. Just what I want. Okay. So I do have a chance. Uh, although he does have the, uh, you know, the remand for the back rat. Uh, Relic does hurt crime, but I don't care a ton about it right now. Phil Electrolyze is the way to go. We drop the pack rat, he remands it. Drop it again, hopefully it sticks around. The chances are slim, but that seems like our best shot right now. surprised he didn't hold up remand. That seems like a big mistake. Maybe he drew a removal. Or did he... Oh shit, he didn't have the, uh... the tap land, did he? 
that what happened? No, he has a he has a scalding turn in hand, right? So I don't I don't really get it. Anyway, maybe he misplayed, or maybe he has a plan. No, hopefully I drop this third land to, to copy it as soon as possible. This is another good reason I think to run twenty three land so you more often hit that third land on time for pack rat, which is critical. Here we go. So he has remand and two mystery cards in hand. So that definitely really makes me want to go all in on the pack rat. So he can't block this turn. So I could just ride this to victory. I think he might have made a huge misplay there. Now what do we discard? Uh, I'm thinking the crime. Although that that goes to the, yeah, the crime is not very good with the relic in play. So excuse me. But then neither is the rack if I'm not really going in on a discard plan. Uh, this is good against that and any creatures he might play. So right now I'm thinking the rack seems right. Cause, yeah, like I said, I don't have much of a discard plan, but there's a case to be made for this. But I think with that in play, that's even less of a consideration. Uh, yeah, the rack, the rack seems right. If you guys think that's incorrect, let me know. But. No, he can't electrolyze, so that's good. Yeah, that's fine. So he still has remand and two mystery cards. So I love playing the fourth land here, because then it lets you do something other than copy every turn. Um, and then probably discarding the crime. Although I sort of like discarding Victim. Because I'm not going to have two mana up for that anytime soon, right? More than likely. Unless he Wraths, then I'll, you know, I'll go on another plan, but... I'm guessing he, if anything, he might have boarded out the Wrath since he didn't see these in game one. So my instinct is to... Drop the Swamp, discard the Victim, play Crime. kind of want to keep victim around for you know but I'm for one of these but I'm not gonna be holding up the mana it's not and they can block except for that but whatever three damage two cares so let's get rid of that so let's just try to minimize his card advantage oh shit I guess that was a consideration too. I should have just not played things so he can't remain, <laughs> but I don't know. Uh oh. Oh shit, he does have the damnation. I was so close. But I do have this. He can, I think I'll just, you know, I'll leave one, hope that he cracks this. Although he can do it on that turn, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's wise to keep one in hand, but it, it really, I wish I knew what was in his hand. And now he's got this. I guess he was planning that damnation the whole time. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, still not a huge deal. I don't know that I would have played it differently. Because um, this is still only going to be doing three a turn max, you know. To go all in on crime. So next turn he can do this. I'll I'll do the rat. Yeah. I'm taking a risk. It's a big risk either way. But like I want some long game here. You know what I mean. So I'm hoping that I'll make him crack this next turn. I guess that's a small window, but. 
That's what I got. There we go. And I guess he wants the card advantage too, so there we go. So the question is, which do I play first? I kind of want to play this first in case he like mana leaks or something, and then I could pay for the mana leak, and then he discards two things either way. Whereas if I play this, well, he'll still discard two things. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to cram. So right now he's winning, but it is close, and it looks like he doesn't have much. He's got, you know, he's, he's winning because of the man lands, which I would love right now. What the hell is that? Really? Really? Tidings? That's sweet art, but, uh, you know, you don't want to sorcery speed. Play, um, Jesus' ingenuity, if anything, and even that's not good enough. You don't want sorcery speed anything, that's ridiculous. Uh, let's just drop this while we can. And before he, you know, potentially discards it. Yeah. <sighs> Tidings. Wow. So I have actually have him in a pretty close spot too. Oh jeez, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Okay, so he wins because of fucking tidings of all things and now we're back to you know turn one all my work undone tidings is broken bad tidings uh, da, da, da. So I think we're man because I don't want him to draw it's going to be hard fighting through all this counter magic God. Yeah, he's just got me. Between the manland snap, bolt. Two counter spells. Like, oh. I'd be very surprised to get out of this. That damnation was brutal. I think I played... I, I feel like I played perfectly. If, you know, you disagree politely, let me know. But, um, I, I feel like I played, I played how I should have. I was expecting him to not have that damnation, but maybe he knows about pack rat, or maybe he kept it in just in case, or maybe he, you know, he doesn't know the deck and. Ugh. <coughs> so I have, if I draw a bridge. Um, and if he goes all in on this, then I would be fine. He's yeah. See, if I was him, I would keep up two mana. It's that's not worth it. I don't I don't know if it's worth it. I think he just has me no matter what here, right? Let's just see what's in his hand, just because. Maybe I you know I see something new. Yeah. So that'll be that game. He'll just swing next turn, and that's that. So let's just concede early. So I think this is still probably the you know the right mix. Although the damnation kind of and the all the man lands he has kind of makes me want to take out of a rat for a removal spell. Meh. Seems good. Although I kind of want to take a pact. Because he has a lot of, uh... Most of his creatures are black. So yeah, I, th I think that's a good idea. Um, I'm just realizing that so far all of his creatures have been... Had three toughness or less. I imagine he has at least one or two more. But that kind of does make me want to bring a Bile Blight. 
you know, that will be a mistake. But no, like if we still have one victim. So that seems good to me. Pithing Needle's a bit tempting too with the man lands, but yeah, something more versatile is nice. Yeah, let's try that, right? Right, right, right? Yes. You, hell yes. This is the god hand. Tidings. Uh, so this is this is great for me. Uh, I think snap. I guess. Well, the snap doesn't do anything now either. But yeah, he could like remand and then snap and blah blah whatever. So let's take that. Let's just nip that in the bud. Did he? No, he didn't draw the target. So yeah, we are in great shape. He could, if he does, the if he does draw a counter spell and counters this, then that puts a big damper on things. If he doesn't, oh, and that's that's bad. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. We don't even care at all. Do -do -do. Lily, I'm not sure what I'm discarding here. Uh, he does have the tar pit, but blah blah. Yeah, I don't think I care. Nope. And then crime Lily affliction next turn. Easy, easy, easy. This is a bit annoying against the crime. Hopefully, maybe he'll crack it this turn. Nope. Uh. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think either way, I have to get rid of this, right? Either discard it or I play it, so. Or actually, no, I guess I don't. Uh, I could just drop the nails. That's fucking... Yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. The, the crime doesn't matter, so let's let's just say fuck it. I don't care if he cracks, whatever. He's still gonna be at. Oh shit! I think I, s I messed this up slightly. Should have crimed first. Yeah, I should have crimed first. Fuck. Oh well, that might be my downfall here. Probably not. I mean, I'm, I'm in a great spot, but still. Now you can attack Lily. That's quite bad. <coughs> still a solid advantage on him. Yeah, fuck, I think I misplayed the hell out of that. I do have my crime in the air, though, so that'll hopefully help things out. Oh, fucking hate Karinos, glad I got rid of that. This is easily one of my most hated cards, and easily one of the worst cards <coughs> for this deck. Land, yes. Land or Lily is basically all I want to see. Deck more and be perfect. So I'd probably have him here. Probably. Oh, that's great. Right, that can kill him. Yes. Hopefully he doesn't... Well, if he has a remand, that doesn't even matter. Let's get rid of your land. I'll do double duty, because it'll keep him off uh, uh, cryptic and stuff. Yeah, now there's just nothing he can do about this. Uh, perfect timing. 
Yes, there we go. Beautiful. I don't know that I would have conceded there necessarily, because um, I didn't have um, I didn't have a way to keep him on one card. Like as far as I knew, I, I definitely could have drawn something, but it seems like he conceded a bit early. I think from the eight rack player's perspe uh, perspective, we sometimes forget how frustrating it can be to play against the deck. <laughs> Every now and then I'll I'll face the mirror or I'll play one of my different decks against it and it is it can be extremely frustrating. Especially uh if your deck uh designed to draw a ton of cards and have a ton of cards and feel, you know, very in control of the game and you have zero. Um I can I guess I can see why people rage quit, but um you know, it's a daily I, I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. Stay in it uh, as long as possible. That that uh, that tidings card was uh, <laughs> highly questionable. <coughs> what is uh, ingenuity? Like that's what you want. Same same cost, but it's instant speed. And for the instant speed, you draw one less card. It's but it's it's way more worth it, I would say. But even this, I don't I don't think I would play. Maybe he. Uh, Maybe he doesn't know about the card. It's in standard right now, though. I would think that he would know about it. <coughs> um, my guess is that he wanted a replacement for his Sphinx's Revelation and couldn't afford them or something. But I thought they were cheap, so I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, tidings. Very, very strange. Although it did, uh, it did win in game two, so... Anything that says draw three cards, three or four cards, is you know it's it's dangerous against us, even if it is sorcery speed or whatever. Anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, just a recap. If you guys are interested, you know some of the discussion that's been going on in the eight rack primer thread. <coughs> There's been a lot of. Uh, just one second here. I'll grab some water. Uh, yeah, there's been a lot of discussion discussion on splashing recently in the forums, um, and I, I tried out a white splash myself for a while, and I felt like it didn't really come together. I did I did try to make it work, maybe not as hard as I could have, but it, it didn't really feel like it came together. And this has been my experience for a long time now. Anytime I've taken bridge out of the deck, I have always felt worse off. Like, if you're ever doubting bridge, just try any build with something in place of it. <coughs> Whether that's, um, you know, Lingering Souls in Pack Rat, Lingering Souls in Bitter Blossom, uh, Ghostly Prison, stuff like that. You know, anything to fend off creatures. <coughs> I just, I've always felt worse. Um, despite the fact that bridge does get blown up fairly often, um, it does, I think, more often it succeeds wonderfully, uh, more often than it, you know, fails miserably. Uh, and the reason it's so good is that it just, it offers inevitability in a way that cards like Prison and Souls and Bitter Blossom don't. They, you know, opponents will often be able to work around cards like that. Eventually they can pay for Ghostly Prison uh, without much issue. Um, you know, they'll be able to get in enough damage through it that, you know, it's gonna really put some pressure on you. Uh, seasoned eight rec players know very well how just even a single snapcaster can win the game. So, um, I, I feel like for that reason alone, Ghostly Prison is not a good choice for us. Uh, Lingering Souls, I really love the card and I want it to work, but I feel like maybe it's, it's not, it's not quite right. Uh, it just doesn't quite work. May like, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe what we should be doing... Like, my feeling is I don't really want to cut anything out of here. Like, the only flex slots are really pack rat, right? So, if we're playing Lingric Souls and we need bridge, then basically the thing to do is to cut two pack rat for two Lingering Souls, which is not terrible. 
but I feel like if we're just splashing for two single lingering souls, it's not really going to make much of a difference. Uh, certainly, like, not more than pack rat, really. It's going to be a marginal difference, and it, overall, it might not even necessarily be better. Um, and then, like, we do have to consider the life loss. It is, that is a real thing. I don't think two lingering souls is going to make up for the life loss you incur from splashing. Um, and and thoughtsies on top of it, a lot of people don't consider thoughtsies on top of the fetches. They're, you know, four thoughtsies no less. Um, like, you know, junk, junk kind of gets away with it because it has a bit of, I believe they have a bit of uh, life gain. Actually, they have quite a lot now with siege right now. Like, so they don't give a shit, and they run, what two or three thoughtsies instead of four. And so, I don't know. I think it's. I think if you pull it off right, like you can definitely minimize it and still have a pretty solid mana base. But that between the four thoughtsies and the fact that like our average win turn is I don't know, probably like eight, give or take. Um so you know, this this can add up over those eight turns between, you know, if they're throwing burn spells at us and they squeak in some damage and stuff like that. Like I don't know. Like maybe I'm just too conservative for my own good, but that's that's been my experience. I have tried splashing, and I have tested games, not quite as extensively, extensively as I could have, but I don't know. That's that's my instinct at this point. So that's that's how I feel about the white splash. Um, maybe like there's a guy in the forums that uh, proposed bitter blossom and souls, but I feel like that's, like, I like that on principle, but, and there was a siphon life to, I guess, uh, cushion some of the life loss, but I like that on principle, like, it sounds great, we can, you know, we have tons of blockers, we have tons of attackers, we, you know, we have this steady stream of, of stuff that's not, you know, that can be wrath, but, um, like, the souls tokens keep coming, uh, the bitter blossom tokens keep coming, in, even through wrath, so that's, you know, that's cool. <coughs> it doesn't have that weakness Bridge has, but the life, lof, blah, 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 life loss from Bitter Blossom really worries me. And again, I don't... I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, try it. It's not It's not necessarily a terrible idea. I guess, like, two of these, three souls, and one siphon life. But I'm not... I'm really not encouraged. Between Thoughtseize, Bitter Blossom, you don't have, like, the safety net of Bridge and then damage from your lands. I just feel like it's it's just too much. I don't know. Maybe I should test it. I would actually test it, but I sold off my Bitter Blossoms uh, a while ago, and they're pretty expensive now. If they come down in price, I'll, I'll probably uh, try out the card again. But Or if anyone wants to lend me some Bitter Blossoms, I'll try it out. But um, my instinct on that as well is that the life loss is just too much. So, I mean, I, I found that before when we used to run um, before Pack Rat, you know, before we decided that was the card. Um, we had uh, Bitter Blossom and in a mono black build, and overall I found, and I think a lot of other people found, that the life loss was really just too much a lot of the time, so I don't know. Uh, so for now, I'm sticking with mono black. That's that's how I feel about it. With we've discussed the red splashes as well, as well. That's I guess that's something I will test. But I'm not. I'm really not. I'm looking at the list and I'm just. I'm really not seeing what the fuss is about. I don't. I love uh, love the idea of uh, like this uh, red splash list. That uh, you know from Picasella that I've mentioned before. Oops, sixty-one cards. Not sure what that's about. Um, I definitely don't love this exact list, but I love it. I love the the core of it. The fact that it's built to be aggressive. You you know you have bolts, Nix of the lightning, all very aggressive cards, uh, and it's just about you know like pounding and damage. You know like it, it's a tempo build as as some other people have pointed out. Then you got bridge in the side for you know certain decks where it's more worth it to to do that. Um, 
So I, I think I would change this significantly, but I do, I love it on, uh, I love it on principle. If, if we're splashing red, I think this, uh, approach is probably the way to go, as opposed to, uh, a control -y build. Um, I, you know, people argue Lightning Bolt offers reach, and it does, but I feel like it's, it's not consistent. I, I think we really need, uh, unconditional removal spells. You know, if we have any of them, like we have this too, but, well, I, I mean, we already only run four in a rack, so I guess that's, I guess that makes sense, but, uh, some people just run bolt, and that I think is strictly incorrect, so, and I feel like the, the whole reach thing is not, it's not so consistent that, um, you know, that should be like a main draw to play red, or whatever, like, it, if you're only doing that, like, it, it's just, most games with a rack are one on inevitability, I think, you know, uh, you have them in the lock, you know, you have Lily and, uh, uh, and a rack out, and they're, you know, at one card, like you saw in that Grixis game, um, so Bolt is, you know, it'll, you know, it'll get you there sometimes, like, it'll, you know, prevent them from getting that extra turn or two that might have, you know, allowed them to get out of the lock, but, most often not. So, but um, I do like it, you know, as a supplement to unconditional removal, like terminate. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So the white splash, uh, I like basically to make us even more of a control deck. Like we have path, which is just amazing because worm coil is a real problem for us. Uh, like if we if we have bridge, it's often fine. But there's a lot of times we don't, or maybe they get rid of the bridge, and in, in those cases, path is amazing. So stuff like that. Um, and then you have, you know, s like souls can be sweet. And then you have stony silence to you know fix the drawn matchup, or at least you know it helps it a lot. Um, amazing against affinity. Also, we already have a good affinity matchup, and I feel like. Two st like the Tron games will come down to whether or not you draw Stony Silence, and I f I haven't tested it against them personally, but my impression would be that even sometimes that that wouldn't matter. Like all they need is Karn; they don't necessarily need Old Stone. Uh, so it would come down to whether or not you draw Stony Silence, pretty much, and then even if you do, sometimes you won't win. So, and we already already have a good affinity matchup, so I feel like that shouldn't be a huge draw to splash white either. If you're splashing white, definitely use that card, but I don't, I don't think it's a huge enough reason. And we don't absolutely need path. Um, basically, th the only reason to run it is, well, there's two reasons. The one cost is is a big deal. That's sweet. And also the fact that it hits worm coil. So I do love path, but I don't think we like absolutely need it. Similar to how we don't absolutely need stony silence. Um, so, yeah. But I do love white, like, that's, that's the one I'm most interested in exploring going forward, like, if new white cards come out, or if someone comes up with a really clever white splash build, um, I'm most interested in that. Green, of course, you have, uh, Abrupt Decay. Um, I'm not sure what else there is in green, to be honest. Like, Choke. Choke could be sweet. Um, abrupt decay and choke come to mind. I'm not sure what else. Uh, so green is interesting, but I feel like it probably doesn't offer enough. Um, but light from the loam, but uh, I'm not sure we need that kind of engine. So we already have Lily. We already have wrench mine. Do we need to, you know, make room for another engine in here? I feel like, you know, we we could. Like, you'd cut a lily or two, I guess, for a loam or two. I don't know. But do we really want to do that? I don't know. Like, people are always bitching about, you know, the fact that, you know, we don't splash and we hate splashing and blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> I really think a lot of that is misunderstood. Um, I think a lot of us would like to splash. Like, the appeal of, you know, opening up the deck and... Um, 
you know, having access to these different options is very appealing to everyone, even the people that, you know, like me and uh, Memory Lapse and some others that are hesitant to splash, uh, we would like to, but we just don't think it's what's best for the deck in most cases, if not all cases. Because, you know, we've thought about this, we've explored the options, we've tested some builds, we've, you know, we see what works and doesn't work. I don't know, like, and then the the other side of it is like, you know, if you come up with a great build, then a great splash build that you truly believe is better, then, you know, come up with it, post it, and I'll try it out if I have the cards. I don't, I don't have all the cards right now. I actually, uh, I sold, um, I have 11 Zendikar fetches, so I've sold, I sold all of those recently for, uh, you know, financial reasons. Everyone's saying that, you know, they're going to be reprinted um, the next set, probably, if not then, then Modern Masters 2 or Magic Origins or whatever. I think it'll, Magic Origins seems weird, it seems weird to like skip a, you know, print new fetches and then skip a set and then print old fetches, that's unlikely, but maybe. But anyway, they're going to be re reprinted soon, almost definitely, so I decided to, to dump those and get a boatload of tickets and then I'll just, you know, buy them all back when they're five bucks, so with those tickets and then, uh, you know, make a huge profit. So my splashing options are limited right now. Uh, I do have all the uh, cons of Turk here fetches, but yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, assuming I have the cards and in the future I will have all the cards, um, I'm willing to test out whatever, you know, even if I don't agree with all the choices, I think it's good to try out lists like this one that, you know, um, you know, have some good ideas at least, and have some results, and then show, you know, try it out and show people what does what works and what doesn't work, and you know why you should, you know, the upsides of splashing red and the and then the downsides, you know, because uh, people seem to really be lacking um, like a hard understanding of the upsides and downsides of splashing. People are only looking at the upsides, so anyway. And also, I mean, it's just fun to test out different builds, so, yeah. And the blue splash, there's, as I say in the primer, there's, I feel like there's not really much there. There's a bit of, uh, uh, discussion a while ago about testing out serum visions, which is interesting, but I think it's more a case of finding room, like, if we're going off the stock list, which we don't necessarily have to, but we gotta start somewhere. Like, what do we take out? I guess, I don't know, you gotta shift some things around, some pack rats, maybe a lily, maybe a bridge, I don't know. Anyway, uh, visions is interesting, because, you know, we would like this kind of effect, and, uh, you know, Dark Steel Pendant was good, but not good enough, was basically the consensus, so, yeah. Um, oh, and about the green splash, the other one was Ancient Stirrings, which I think I like a lot better than Visions. It makes a lot more sense. I like the idea of a build with Stirrings and Abrupt Decay. That sounds kind of cool. This finds lands. You know, we don't run a ton of lands if we, if we run 22, especially uh, running like maybe four of these or possibly less. Um, you know, it, it helps us find our lands. Uh, you know, we can find Muta Vaults off it. That's sweet. We could find a deck more if we, you know, need to do the deck more loop with Raven's Crime. And of course we can find our key cards, the rack and the bridge with this. So this card is, I think, pretty promising. It's just, you know, do we have room for it? And is it worth that room? You know, finding that room for it. Um, I think it's it's definitely worth exploring. And then the, um, you know, of course the issue of splashing and life loss and, and all that stuff. So. But anyway, this, this card interests me quite a lot, and uh, one of the guys, uh, Ken in the forums, he's going to test it soon. Uh, so, that'll be exciting to see, you know, that I think that's something worth testing. If it doesn't work out, whatever, you know, we tried. And if it does, then, you know, maybe we have a, a new, sweet, viable 8-rack build. So, uh, yeah, so we got another minute. I've been talking your face off. Uh, 
This time usually I, I cut it off shortly after, but sometimes I can't help myself. Um, I haven't done a daily in a while, so that that's part of it. It's a lot to talk about, so hopefully you guys don't mind. If you do, then whatever, just skip to the you know skip to the next round. removal and uh, no precise discard so that's annoying but um, you know this is this is good enough I think against certain decks uh, they'll probably just rock me but like scape shift for example would just tear me apart but tons of other decks two twin whatever uh, this this is a pretty solid hand It's the thing I kind of love and hate about modern is the variety of decks. Like some, uh, you have to take very calculated risk with hands like this. Like, is this good against uh, creatureless or creature light decks? No, but you know it's it's good against tons of others. So sometimes you keep a hand like this, and you know they have the wrong deck, and it you get burned for it, but. That's modern. It's one of the benefits of playing standard, I guess, you know. Well, I guess you might have the same problem. Because you've got usually creature light decks and creature heavy decks and no in between. I could just be ignorant on that. It's been a long time since I played standard, so. Don't take it to heart if I don't know what I'm talking about. Hate when they can see my hand, especially if they're a blue deck. Pretty hypocritical, I know, but so based on the probe, did he pay for the probe? Oh yeah, I guess he didn't want to take too much damage. So, he used up his turn, anyway, paying for that. So he's... He might be playing some weird, crazy combo deck. Or did I hear... Is this that, uh, this could be that... Dredge deck I heard about? I don't know. Sure. I don't know. If he's playing a control deck, though, I want to drop that. If he's playing some dredge deck, he could dredge an next turn. This looks like a dredge deck to me, but it could be some weird combo deck. Uh, if he's playing that, that kind of would leave a mana for this. So, I don't know what to do, what to do. One consideration is that if I play this, then he knows... Well, he knew what I drew for the turn anyway, but that would be a consideration otherwise. Uh... I think Affliction is the play, because, you know, optimally I deal with the creature right away, but it's not a huge deal if I, you know, uh, if I'm s slow down a little bit and I, you know, play Lily and I don't know, whatever. I have options. Uh, if I leave this in hand and he has counter spells by chance, then I have less options. can't tripping. Serum Visions, uh, as I think I may have said recently, uh, is a card that I've recently come to stop underestimating. I think I used to underestimate it. But it's it's very powerful against us. You know, we hate the can't tripping and the fact that it sets them up. Like, we can't control the top of their deck, so that makes it makes our discard weaker. Cuz 
because yeah, we'll discard you know one or two things in their hand, but then we'll, they may draw two awesome things off this, or one awesome thing, or whatever. So. <sighs> so yeah, I, I don't know. This m my best guess is that it's that um, Patrick Chapin's dredge list that did not do so well. So um, my worry here is that he has spell pierce, but I don't think I can really play around that, right? Yeah, not without waiting like a bunch of turns. So Lily it is. A lot of games come down to whether or not you resolve Lily. She's that powerful that if she if she sticks, then that's it. If she doesn't, then they you know they get ahead. They draw shit. Ugh, stubborn denial. This is another card I've been seeing more of, and I ugh, I hate that I now have to you know I have to play around. Spell Snare and Spell Pierce and Mana Leak, and now I've got to play around this too. You know, you're not safe on. Mm, it's very frustrating. So if you control a creature with power four, create a kind of spell instead. So I'm assuming he has large creatures in his deck. Although, I'm not sure why people play this. Do they play it like... Spell... Pierce? Pierce you know? Like, do you play four spell pierce and then you want even more of that effect? I don't... I don't get it. I can imagine you wanting four spell pierce, even. So, I'm not entirely sure why people play that. Oh, I guess it's for the secondary effect. Yep, here we go. Oh shit, it's a zombie. Fuck. Oh, we're fucked. And he got rid of my bridge. Oh, uh, and here's another one. <laughs> that was close. Hopefully you can't deal with that. Uh, so yeah, I think keep the swamp in hand for a crime. Yeah, so it is that dredge deck. Um, let's have a look, see if I can look up the list. Chapin... Dredge. Modern. February 26. Is this it? Oh, this is from last year. Chapin's Dredge. Uh, search tools anytime. Past year, or is that just gonna past month? Uh, I can't seem to find it, so I don't know. Whatever, I don't want to spend too much time here. So it looks like we're bringing in the bile blights. Just take two a turn every turn. I, I guess I just dump. Uh, we're gonna start dumping this. I, I want to get my hand count to zero. So yeah, let's get rid of that too. I suppose. Don't really want to, especially with these afflictions out. If I draw a crime, I want to double crime, but I don't know. Keep my hand count low, especially with you know he's got these these extra guys. That works for me. <coughs> there we go. Now we just need a lily or wrench mind or. 
even a crime would be okay. Let's see if I can find that dredge list. Maybe we didn't even see a list because, as I understand it, it did very poorly. Oh, that's very bad. That's very bad. I hate that card. I wish I had, you know, one of these for him, but I, I couldn't really afford to, to do that. Uh, but I guess he doesn't have much in his graveyard right now, so it's not a huge deal, but... You know, I'm gonna put stuff in his graveyard, of course, so... Hopefully he doesn't have many answers for bridge that, you know, that could be a, a huge boon in this matchup. I'm guessing he has answers though. I mean, in between the discard and the counter spells alone, that puts him in decent shape against it. Shape and Dredge, what was the name of the Pro Tour? Favorite Horse. I'm pretty sure there's a list floating around there somewhere. Oh god, this is dirty. Don't like this at all. He might cryptic or something. Okay. Oh, he's just uh, to use a non-land card. How did that get there? I thought that was not there. Let's totally give you that back because that does not. Oh, it just is a one mana counter spell shit. But still, I think it's still probably better than giving him a free draw and, a, and scry. And yeah. So I've got to fight through one counter spell right now. That's annoying. Unless I pull a victim. Definitely going to side out Slaughter Pact for a Bile Blight. Use an online card to return to its owner's hand. Lily. Uh, oh God. All of these are really, really bad for me. Even Lily with all these racks, because he has this to negate the discard, basically, right? On his part, so it's not. Yeah, and then he'll just take her up and bolt the bridge. So Bobble seems like the easy choice. Yep, I guess he can just draw two cards a turn now every turn. And I imagine he'll counter this, which is fine. That's what we want to do, so. Uh, Chip and Dredge. Pro Tour Fate Reforged. It's, whatever. It's way too difficult to find this list. I wonder if it was on camera at all. This uh, site, by the way, mtgcoverage.com. Uh, if you guys don't know about it or don't use it, I highly recommend it. It's, uh, the design is obviously pretty shit, but it gets the job done, you know? So I'm just pulling pretty much everything I don't need. I imagine he has a lock. Maybe a cryptic command or something to bounce this. Turn, totally return the uh, Tasker, which does nothing. Oh right, I, I was being ridiculous earlier. He dumps cards in, in the yard, which makes it even better. He doesn't even need that the dump ability, the Thought Scour. Like, he, he'll be good enough with just that. It's, he's what a great card. So Raven's Crime is not 
completely awful. I, that's really just helping him out, kind of. Yeah. Um, right now, my wind condition is mill. Seems the most likely, and his wind con is blowing up this bridge. So that's very bad. Very, very bad for me. But the good news is if I get enough cards like this on top of his lily, it could, uh, that could be great. I could just totally race him. So you can see now he's, if I was him anyway, I, I might hesitate. Well, I mean, these negate each other, so. But he's not getting ahead by doing this, so. Another wrench mine would be sweet, or that works too. This is why I don't mind uh, crime terrible lot. So right now, and actually I can start, no. I thought I could start doing damage, but this is going to prevent. Uh, tasker again. Hopefully I can start doing damage to her before she blows up my bridge. That's cause she, she. I imagine she'll do that immediately next turn. Um, nope, couldn't get it done. I needed um, a wrench mind. So he's more than likely gonna try to blow up my bridge next turn. The question is, well, he would just win automatically, right? Five, why? Well, um, no, I do have these guys. Um, so hypothetically, I'd block two of these. I would take six. If I don't block, I would take 10, 14, 16, and die almost immediately. So the question is, do I want to I want to save the bridge or the lands. I do have a land in hand, so it's a tap land, unfortunately, but... You know, I could slowly recover. Uh, I kind of like that idea, to be honest. It seems more likely that he'll win. You know, I can hold him off for like one or two turns and then hope to draw into another bridge basically um, there's two and forty cards that's a pretty slim chance so yeah I guess we'll stick with the bridge If I leave this in hand, then he he'll just keep up taking her and, and swing with these. I don't know. <sighs> A lot of tough choices. My thinking is just leave this in hand, see what he does. If he blows this up, then you know he may force me to act, but we'll see what happens. Of course, I could pitch it to that as well, but again, I don't. As in other games, I don't really want to waste a turn dredging for this. I, I would very much like to draw. I don't know. Anyway, let's see what happens. Let's get my thoughts in. Digger. That, uh, that, you know, that works too. He really should have attacked first before doing that, but, you know. So I wonder. I imagine.
imagine it, like I don't see a reason not to try to blow this up next turn. Uh, da, da, da. Now do I dredge? Kind of want to dredge so next turn I have that. Like this wastes two turns if I'm just going for land, right? Yeah, like I'm skipping a draw and then comes in tapped. That's I kind of don't want to because he might just, if I keep this in hand, he, like he'll probably just keep slinging. Although he didn't do it last turn, he didn't think about it, but I imagine he realized his mistake by now. I don't really want to take four, you know, whatever. Let's just do that. We can dredge. If need be. This has come up to like a handful of times. <coughs> or people have ultimated Lily against me. I abused, uh. Oh, excuse me. I've used Dak more to get back in the game. I think usually, uh, sorry, I got stretched. Uh, usually, I, you know, it, it doesn't get you out of it, but <laughs> every now and then. Uh, this is interesting. Thanks for the uh, the free cards. Use a pile to sacrifice. To use pile one. For most decks, almost all decks, uh, if not all decks, except the ones in running staring bridge, it's incorrect to, you know, to blow up all your lands. It's ridiculous. We have deck more. We have bridge though, so it's like, you know. So this is still a worry though, that was, uh, seems uh, very much correct on his part to you know, take it up to 7, because now he can just do it all over again in 5 turns, so I need to deal with this. So I guess he's 5, 10, four, yeah, he wants... 5, 10, 14, 18. He wants to kill me all at once, right? So. So this will be. Yeah, see? Now, two drops against that. That's bad. That's rough. Would be perfect, actually. I think I would win if I could cast it. But Again, I, th I think I'm playing correctly, but sometimes it's just how it is. Trying to think of, of what really took down the game here. It's the Lily versus Bridge. And I think, he, yeah, he's stubborn denial of my early Lily, which I think really helped. So hopefully a land here. Yeah. He Did he really not plus one? That's ridiculous. I guess he's getting nervous. Ah, fucking Mitchell's ball. Again, um, so you can see. I mean, the Tasker is sometimes poor. In top deck mode, uh, you can just keep giving this stuff back to him. Uh, I'm starting to wonder if I can win through mill again. I mean, uh, it seems like I have a fair shot. Why did he do that? I wonder. I don't know. Maybe he forgot. He did make a serious, pretty serious misplay. Now the question is, uh, do I crime or do I drop the third land, you know, for backup bridge or a lily of my own?
questions, questions, questions. I think it's correct to draw the swamp because he's not. Like, if I could actually put him in a rack range right now, I would probably uh, retrace between that and his lily. That would be great. But he's got this, so it's quite annoying. So, yeah, let's just drop the swamp. I do need to deal with the lily, though, because... Uh, he could definitely race. I mean, really, all he needs to do, he can, I don't think this time he'll, uh, what is, yeah, that's useless. Um, I don't think he'll go up to 7 this time, he doesn't need to, he's getting down to 11 cards. He might not be paying attention to that, of course, uh, a lot of people forget, but, um, yeah, you know, he just wins if he, just sort of does something. Not really. I am, that's another reason to uh, to drop the swamp. Actually, is because uh, if I pull a three drop and I can't play it, it's not just the fact that I can't play it and use it. It's that these can start swinging. Although that's less of a consideration right now, since he's you know got me on this uh, very narrow clock. Um, yeah, I can just I can still just pick my bridges and let him mill himself out. <laughs> Tasker, Tasker. <laughs> this is a very strange game. This is still game one, believe it or not. Sometimes I lose track. Yep, so I will just keep my two bridges and bring back my deck more. Look at that yard. Hmm. So I'll dredge again. I'm getting pretty low on cards myself. I, w I really have to wonder if he's watching. He's down to six. <laughs> uh, and another land. Excellent. Obviously not getting him. I don't even have racks, let alone getting him into rack range. So at this rate, <laughs> he really is going to mill himself out. I think he is paying attention because he's not doing this. This is some funny shit. And look, I get all my lands. Mill, mill, mill. I think I've won... Uh, so let's get rid of this guy. Right? Yeah. Not that it does much, but... I have to take out the uh, the victims. So I guess he doesn't want to pro because that'll kill him faster. So this none of these really do anything, but I'll take out the uh, the path. I guess this is some funny ass shit. I thought I was gonna lose. So you can see that it's not always incorrect to keep your lands. Like I said, it's it's all about the bridge. Uh, what did he have in hand? Yeah. So there you go, friend.
unless he has something that can shuffle his uh, graveyard into his library, that's it. And there we go. I win. That's yeah. I think I won one or two other times through mill. Once it was, I remember one versus uh, the Aura's deck. I think I have that a video of that somewhere. <coughs> Yeah, so I'm really inclined to, I ca like, I want to keep him this to kill the Tassigers, which is a huge pain in the ass, but he has this fucking Anglers. This definitely comes out. I don't think he has, you know, he has the tokens, but, so I think this is definitely correct, because it kills the tokens, and it kills, uh, well, actually, no. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, at least one for tokens. Uh, so there's all kinds of stuff that is applicable against him. Pack rack could be great. It could be correct to just say fuck it and take out like all of removal and bring in pack rat and other stuff. The fact Tesker doesn't bother me an insane amount because of bridge, but he'll probably bring in stuff to deal with bridge. I don't know. For now, maybe I'll do this. I don't know, but blade is a pain too. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. Don't like it. So, pack rat. I feel like seems really sweet against them. A back rat. Uh, backup bridge. Very nice, and it can also just, you know, in the right situations, just go way over the top. I don't know. I could definitely see it, you know, do that thing where you just drop a turn two and then run with it, you know. Uh, this is terrible. Da, 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 da. Needle is sort of tempting. I kind of like. Kinda like, this is for what? Tassiger? It doesn't really do anything else. I don't know, maybe I just bring the uh, the victims back in. Bring an extraction so that could be a thing. Uh, running out of time here. I, I kind of like the idea of like rat and bridge for the big guys and blight for souls and then I can take in another victim. I can also just, I don't know, hook a bank on this. I don't know. Run out of time so let's just submit. Mm, it'll do, right? It'll do, it'll do. I don't know. Against a dredge deck though, this seems pretty bad. Uh, but... I don't know, I think it'll have to do. He might just, you know, it's a high chance of him just discarding Lily right now. I wonder if he kept zero land. Or no, that he draws next turn, not this turn. Well, no uh thought to use on my Lily at least. Don't want to see more lands. colors, right, I believe. So he can't blow up the lily, and I don't have other stuff. So five cards, so he can play this next turn easily. This does nothing. Not nothing, but nothing right now. So the angler makes the most sense to me. I guess he has white too, blue, black, white. So he can blow up the lily, but I don't know. Not a huge problem right now. Um, 
So I feel like I need to take one of the creatures and then Lily can destroy the other one. I am worried about this blowing up the Lily, but... She's what, 2-1 I think? Yeah. So Eggler makes the most sense to me. <coughs> so he has brought in a lot of uh, destruction, which is definitely concerning. On the other hand, I guess if he plays Kentucky, then he's not gonna. He may not want to drop the explosives to right away. So that's that's annoying now. Ooh, excuse me. Um, yeah, I can blow up the Kentucky next turn though. Blue lock. So I guess he needs a. I wonder if he'll play the, uh, oh shit, Tessiger, don't want Tessiger. Hmm. is troublesome and so is the explosive so can we fight through it all I don't think so so I'm thinking like bridge is bad right now because I have to pay for it and also he'll probably just blow it up anyway almost definitely I totally would so my thinking is Lily, discard Dagmore, and uh, no, actually I guess minus two and, and get rid of one of those, right, because that'll die just next turn anyway. I don't think he cares too much about the discard. Yeah, I need to get rid of one of these fuckers. So I, I, I do kind of want a plus one and I kind of want a minus two. If I plus one, then I sort of... I think I'm getting rid of that explosives, but... Um, you know, I can... Well, no, see, the, the rack plan is not even very good because he has this. It, it slows him down a bit, I guess. I don't know, not really. I don't know. I don't feel like it's very good. So... Lily minus two. And he's okay. I guess he thinks I'm gonna plus one. Not true, sir. Well, I guess you know he might want to draw into a stubborn denial too. So get rid of one of those. I fully imagine he'll get rid of this and then I mean he can fucking delve it back to his hand anyway, potentially if I pick it. Ugh. Yeah, all these choices are not very good. Oh, I'm really surprised he got rid of that. Uh, works for me, I suppose. I guess he has a plan I don't know about. Maybe he's more interested in this effect. He still only has two... No, wait, yeah, he can go blue, black, white, so... And that kind of ruins my whole, you know, secrecy thing. <coughs> oh, there she goes. I'm happy to get rid of that, but maybe he drew another one. I don't know. That's quite likely. This deck does seem pretty sweet, especially against us. Not, not a great matchup. I think we could just kind of ride bridge, or the ride bridge to. How the hell? Uh, could just ride bridge to victory. Uh, excuse me. As we did in game one, but oh, he saw my hand, and now, you know, now I've got to beat him. Nothing really I can do about that. Uh, what do you have in hand? Ah, oh, so close with the Thoughtseize. Uh, shit. I think it's a complete mystery card between the probe and flooded. 
Red Strand. So a lot of his stuff is exiled, so it's even more annoying to figure out what's what might be in his hand. So I don't think he has anything, so I think I'll just bait this. I have to blow it up at some point, so and it's at least he's only getting one thing for it, so um, I can get a at least I get a bit of damage with this affliction. So I can race a little bit. Not very well, but uh, what is this? Oh, he has to pay for it too. So that's sort of nice. I guess he doesn't really get much of a turn. Why did he lose life? Oh, uh, the affliction, of course. Blew that up. Da -da -da. So four, six. So his thoughts, he's just risky right now. Is it? Six, twelve. So I, I don't think it matters, actually. Like, not really. Because, um, yeah, he's killing me in two turns anyway, right? Six. This is not speeding up his clock, really. He's, yeah, so see if this helps at all. Shit. So, uh, denial seems like the way to go for sure because basically I want to turn the bridge right now and this lets him hard counter it. This is great but I'm down on the clock. I didn't realize my time was running out. So I really have to win this one. Even if... Uh, what do I want? What do I want? I think I don't care about the creature right now, right? Yeah. Let's just do that. You go for it, buddy. Uh, so bridge, bridge, bridge. Nope. There we go. Game over. So we really have to hurry up in this last game. Four minutes to win. So is that correct? Sure. Pardon me. Grab a little snack there. <coughs> He's uh, taking quite a while to figure out his sideboard. I'm starting to wonder if he thought that was the last game. That would work for me. I'll take that win. So yeah, overall, definitely a uh, bad matchup. Uh, Bridge is sick against them, but, you know, they have answers, especially post-board, so. Um, I feel like Rat might be too slow. They're, they're pretty quick deck, so. Uh, yes, play first. Uh, yeah, this is risky, but gotta do it. I wonder if he plays Urborgs. That would really help me out. <sighs> yeah. So I don't know. Take the Inquisition. Take the Lily, maybe. Uh. Inquisition. 
hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Probably just gonna lose to time here. Or he'll just order my own lands, or he'll kick my ass with creatures. Uh, notice how I played the land here to play around Stubborn Denial. I hate it when people say good luck, I really do. Like, you don't mean that. <coughs> Do you really want me to have good luck, have better luck than you, and win? I know it's, you know, the polite thing to say, but I don't, I don't agree with it. I don't believe in saying anything you don't mean ever, so. I always just say thanks. I'll do that now. It's like, well, thank you, that's, that's really generous of you to want me to do better than you. Nobody seems to notice that I don't wish it back. This might just be helping him more than hurting, but... So what does he have in hand? Just a bunch of cantrips. Last I checked, and a lily, which is worrisome. But less worrisome with this out. If you got stuck on two lane, that would help me a lot. Seems very unlikely with all his cantrips, though. Jeez, and I guess it doesn't even matter if he has fucking this shit. Yeah, I can't even do anything against that. That's very. except this, of course. Uh, that's very frustrating. So I can draw. I don't think he has any more counter spells. Not unless I checked, anyway. So. Bridge is good right now. What was that? Thousand Okay. Explosives down that and he gets the bridge. Fuck yeah. So it's extremely unlikely that I win here. I need a second land or a third land and a second bridge. Uh, meanwhile, while I'm waiting for those two specific cards, he's doing five a turn. So I have to draw two cards in four turns. Or three turns even. So that's it's almost impossible. Although, I mean, if I just draw the land, I can make him. Nope, 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 I can't. There we go. There it is. Uh, da -da -da. So I think... Victim. I would love to wrench mine, but I'm in way too tight of a spot right now. So I think Victim right now, before he can use this ability, if I do it next turn, he will... counter it, which he could still do, potentially. Or... Um... You know, or he'll play the land and then uh, use that ability in response. So we'll kill that. Hopefully, he has no more creatures next turn. Lily, kill that. So we'll be down to ten. I just have a Lily, and that's important. He has nothing. Ideally, please, no stubborn denial. Fuck that fucking card. It synergizes so well with the uh, Tasker because it's like a, if he has it, if I try to kill the Tasker, it's like I can't because I I have a Tasker. Yeah, <laughs> great card for this deck, yeah. I totally see white's there. So now I need him to not have a second creature and no counter spell. This could hurt a lot. Bottom bottom, works for me. Lots of lands, that does not work for me. Uh tempting to uh do this, do I do it, or do I Lily? I'm gonna do it, I'll take the five, whatever, fuck it. I don't want him to counter this. And, you know, there's certain benefits to, uh, dumping my hand here. Fuck you, Stubborn Denial. Why didn't he cast that before, or did he just draw it? See, good call me. Get rid of your hate cards, you fucker. Well, just one hate card, and then one card that's a real pain in my ass sometimes. Uh, so, I could squeak out a win here, this is actually possible. Between the uh, the affliction and the mutable, I can do it. I can pull it off. Let's see. Come on, resolve. Fuck! 
fuck. Uh, had him if it wasn't for that. Yep. That was close. Good game. That really was a good game. <laughs> so, despite the uh, the good luck you wish me, it did not work out. That's another thing that annoys me about good luck. It doesn't. It's not like it works. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, that was a hell of a game, so I imagine you guys enjoyed that. So. Whether I win or lost, usually all I, I mean, all I really ask for is a close game, you know, relatively close fair fight. Just anything that's lopsided, you know, one way or the other is, is not usually fun, even for me if I, well, I am kind of an evil bastard and this is a pretty evil deck, sometimes lopsided games are, are really fun, you know, you just the games where they don't get to play anything. <laughs> Those can be great. Just, you know, it feels so good to just strip their whole hand and drop a bridge, drop a lily, drop a rack. Those happen every now and then. Feels great. But sometimes I do feel bad, but usually not. Um, yeah, this is a great deck to play if you're an asshole. Fucking stubborn. Starting shortly. So I may just do an all in one video. Normally I, I cut it up, but you know, I, I talked a lot after the first round and this one went very long. So Ugh, I can't believe how close that was. I, re I almost definitely would have had it if that resolved. Hell of a top deck. I'm just going to use the uh, bathroom actually be right back. Okay, we're back. Just making sure everything's still running properly. Yeah, I like to not be distracted by bodily functions and whatnot while I'm playing, so I wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, pretty solid hand. Keep, keep, keep. Guessing this is burn. Yep. Uh, so, hmm. if it's creature heavy, that's good. Nope, it's not. Uh, I definitely take it the lava spike. Um, yeah, there, that's. If he doesn't draw land, I, I'm in a pretty good spot. If he does draw land, I'm probably fucked. A lot of games you can really tell just what's what's going down. As, as, a, as soon as they, you know, you just gotta see the opener. That's all you need. Uh, so victim, uh, this is something I've learned over time. Um, I think when I first started playing against Burn, sometimes I would put off get, getting rid of their only creature. Uh, I've learned like 
pretty much no matter what. If not, no matter what, just kill it right away. Just get it out of the way. Don't uh, don't try to like optimize your mana, like cast a victim and then something else in the same turn. Blah blah blah. Just fucking kill it right away. I mean, after the uh, line trigger, of course. Um, actually, I should kill it now because he might he might draw a land and then Boros Tram, right? Much as I would love that land trigger. Boris Charm does a permanence, right? Permanence neutral or indestructible until the end of the turn. This is why that bio blood is sweet. I think I may have pointed that out in a previous video too. Because um, it gets around Boris Charm. That's come in handy for me uh, a few times. So do I get rid of it now? Yeah, I don't see a reason not to. Let's do it. Bye bye. This is like a rack for them, you know what I mean? Um, so if you get rid of. It's like they have two clocks, like we do. We have rack and, say, a pack rat. Um, so getting rid of one of our clocks can. That'd be great. Ugh, God, so annoying. So he's still stuck on land, which works great for me. Get rid of one of his burn spells. Uh, again, I need to get rid of that. It's pretty annoying that he drew a new one, but he's still stuck on land, so that works. And he can't use the uh, shard folly, <laughs> so that's pretty great. Uh, so thoughts he's wrench mind or just wrench mind. He could have an Eidolon, and then he draws a second land, and then I'm fucked. That's a good reason. And even if I cast this, it's still saving me at least a life, right? Potentially. Uh, potentially two. Uh, so I like the thoughts he's here. Yep. So Eidolon just cannot be allowed. Then get rid of two more things. So we're in a pretty good spot. Get the Lily in the rack. Start doing work. I maybe should have dropped the rack first, actually. Yeah, that was probably a mistake. Uh, so, what does he have? Shard Volley, Boris Tram, right? Yes. So, that's seven damage. That's pretty brutal. But he has to get rid of one of them, so. I imagine it will be the Shard Volley. Uh, so I'm at seven. So seems like the lily. Yes. So rack. And this is gonna possibly incentivize him to not play the uh, the other card. And if he does, then whatever, I bet him on a clock. <coughs> so I feel I feel fairly good right now. We're at seven and we've got him you know taking two a turn. But of course he can just, you know, kinda well, he can't even really explode out of nowhere, so let's, uh, let's force some cards out of his hand. So now he should Boris Drum in response. Yep. I wonder if he'll aim it at her. Probably not. Yeah, that's correct. So, he... This is, like, split right down the middle right now. This is what happens against burn, you, uh, you know, it's all, it comes down to top decks. So, uh, huh, this is one of the first times in a long time that Snare and Bridge is coming quite handy. Now I don't have to minus two her, which is nice. So, there we go. And, uh, you know, they don't have any main deck artifact destruction, unless you, you know, Feeling crazy. One 
thing that does suck about Burn is that because they can operate fairly well on just one land, her ultimate doesn't, you know, doesn't really do anything. So Rift Bolt, that's rough. So it's yes, yeah, 100% down to top decks right now. Uh, do I ultimate? I think I ultimate because here's the thing: he's gonna Rift Bolt. I'll be down to one, and then he might draw, say, a Skullcrack. And then, he'll, but he'll only have one land to play it. So that's what we do. So that could save my life, or do nothing. We shall see. And uh, well, he could Swift Spear, so that's uh, definitely a reason to. Play the land. I almost didn't catch that. So, if he draws a one mana burn spell, I lose. If he doesn't, I win. This games against burn are so tense. Concede, concede, concede. Yes. Fuck yes. I, I really I really want to know if he uh, <laughs> if he drew like a skull crack or something. So uh, hopefully we get to see next to this game. Part of me does want to try like leaving pack rats, but I think. If you're playing the percentages, which you should be, then Blade is probably better, so. The stats are there, you know, to back it up. Rack can definitely be good against them, but, I mean, they have things like Searing Blaze and stuff, too, and, uh, you know, they might tie them out, but between that and, uh, I don't know. I, I think they can just ignore it a lot of the time. Or, you know, they can waste a burn spell on it, and that's okay for both parties, but I'd rather, you know, play something like Blight and, and blow them out. Like, you saw a good removal was not that in that first game. How, you know, how critical it was. I, I definitely would have lost if I didn't have all of those removal spells, so... It's great that it, you know, I can have extra to ensure that, you know, I pull about the same amount uh, in each of these games. Uh, I do quite like this hand. This is actually pretty much a perfect hand against Burn. Because uh, this guy's great. They're most likely going to dump their hand. This is great. Uh, if they dump their hand, they start taking damage. This helps them, you know, dump their hand. This is consistent. Uh, kills the creatures too. You can mute all for blocking or attacking. Like, it's just, this is lovely. This might be like the god hand against Burn. My only concern is that, you know, do I want to drop this? I probably do. Like, will it, um, will it make him not want to? Uh, dump his hand. I mean, that's not terrible, too. Ah, uh, um, so I'm thinking that he, this is one of the reasons we board out Bridge and bring in Nyx, because they, they always, if not almost always, uh, bring in artifact destruction, so the fact we board out artifacts while they, you know, bring some in is, uh, quite sweet. So I feel pretty good right now like we're in a fairly good spot. Imagine he'll play, play a card right now. Maybe not. Yes. Works for me. He's getting rid of all of his kind of utility cards too, which makes me feel good. Like maybe he has more in hand, but... Yeah. Uh, so Nyx would be a 4-4 four, four, and he'd become a 3-3, three, three, so I don't really want to play him right now. Do want to play Lily? Definitely. Very good timing. Uh, get rid of a land for sure. It's nice to have a backup Lily. <coughs> so if you, you can 
see now, if you know, if you play something, he starts taking damage. Meh, well, he loses life too, so or he gains life. Sorry, so that negates that, I suppose. So, not a problem right now. Sometimes this card is the fucking worst, but we can totally get rid of it. So, mm -hmm. so right now we're totally gonna drop the next. I wish I could have plus one, but I had to get rid of that. So this will be a 6-6 six, six and it'll become a 5-5. Five, five. He still can't deal with it. So this is where this is what Nyx is for. Situations like this. Um, so I feel like it, yeah, I definitely want to drop the swamp because I've got the Lily plus one going. I remember the first time I played this against Burn, the the guy like stalled for like a minute, just like I think he was half like, what the hell does this do? And also like, oh god. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. So I almost want to play the uh, the second Lily, but I mean, I guess he would just play shit in response. Oh, he doesn't have green for the revelry. Excellent. See, just bam. Next, just doing work. He knew it was hopeless. It's way too fast for a clock. What was he at? Like fourteen life or something. So it's a two turn clock, there's no way he can win in two turns, he knows it. So, beautiful. Um, yeah, th that, that, that worked out. It doesn't always work out that well, I've had, you know, I've had games where things come at the wrong time, like they play the Revel, uh, turn two, and, you know, I'm just fucked. Um, or I drop next turn three, and, you know, their hand is, uh, you know, they got five cards in hand, or, you know, I don't drop the next because they have five cards, or they have, like, three, and then they keep stockpiling, and, yeah, it doesn't always work out, but it usually does. Like burn is extremely linear. It usually can't afford to. Uh, it usually has no reason, and can't afford to play you know differently than it does. So, uh, yeah, that worked. That worked out great. Well, like in the burn matchup at the moment. So, um, that one went quick as it usually does against burn. So I am going to cut this short, and uh, be back for round four soon. Hello everyone, back for round four, daily, uh, this was a pretty terrible hand. Uh, slightly tempting, but... Mm. really don't know. Seems pretty bad. He mulls to six. That is encouraging. So he'll probably go down to four and then I'll play this. And then he's down to three. And then he's, you know, s fairly easy to get into rack range since there are three of them, you know, that could pay off. Bridge can be amazing, of course. Mm, I'll keep it, but it's very questionable. If you mulled a seven, I think I wouldn't. So, I don't know. I'm gonna have to take a very brief break, uh, in about five minutes. Baking some cookies, like the twinkled toes I am. Uh, it's another burn deck. Hooray! Uh, this is <laughs> this is coincidentally uh, an amazing hand against burn. So, oh my god! Well, I have this game, I guess. Although Goblin Guide is a pain, but scalding turn. So I would like a removal spell for this, not another rack, that is for sure. But uh, the good news is I am starting to get damage in on him. If I can, if I pull a wrench mine, I'm just gonna flat out win. There's, I don't even think there's anything he can do. So he has a bloodstained mire and a mystery card. And 
it's the helix. So now I am a little worried. Between this and oh Jesus, this sometimes I wish I ran by on blind main. So it's a toss up right now. I would put bets on him. I don't like <laughs> how many fucking racks do I need? Christ. I mean he didn't I don't know, actually. Three, six, seven. Uh he's bloodstream iron head. If he plays it, I would be very happy. Hopefully he's not that terrible. <coughs> he probably had to go look up Shrieking Fortune. Oh god. <laughs> yep. Yep. Sometimes this happens. I guess I, I'm just gonna race. But the thing is if he, uh, you know, smartly leaves the card in his hand and I don't draw a land or a wrench mine or, or you know, Inquisition or whatever, then I'm I'm pretty boned to just these two goblin guys. Right now I'm betting on me. But it's really, it's really still kind of a toss up. Come on, man. There's not a lot of thinking to do. One thing that does give me a slight edge is if he reveals a, uh, a swamp or even two, then that vastly increases my chances. What do you reveal? Wrench mine. There we go. That'll do. That will do the trick. That will do. But if he, no, yeah, I think I'd, if he has a helix, I think he wins, and if he doesn't, then I, or he, yeah, it's all down to a helix. That would be really bad. If he doesn't have it, then he just, he takes nine, that's it. This is ridiculous. This is the best uh, matchup I could have hoped for, pretty much, that or affinity. Yes, <laughs> fuck yes. Oh, God. That was, you know, not a, a game I should have won, but sometimes that's how it happens. Uh -huh. da -da -da. Da -da -da. Feels good to have a consistent sideboard plan. Oh, it's uh five minutes is up, so I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Um, yeah, so winning game one against Burn usually means you have the match. Um, there's some statistics in the A-Rack Primer, uh, if you guys haven't seen. as a great uh, matchup analysis by Ken, uh, which I link to in the Primer, so you guys can check that out if you haven't. Um, and he has some excellent stats on sideboarding versus Burn and you know the effects of that sideboarding. If I recall correctly, the basic idea is that we have, I think it's something like a 33% win chance game one, and then it goes up, shoots up to, I think it's somewhere between 65 and 75 uh, in games two and three. And that's because I would take a bridge, which is pretty useless against them. <coughs> you did see earlier that uh, it did come in handy, but... I didn't really need it at that time, but yeah, you can see how, you know, it shuts off there, like, any top deck creatures they, they pull, but, uh, usually it's useless, especially with Goblin Guide for revealing lands and putting stuff into your hand, um, so usually, that's bad, we take that out, we bring in Nyx, which is amazing, as you've seen, and Siphon Life, and we just configure things so it's, you know, more suitable for burn. This is, uh, not bad, not too shabby. I want to. I would, you know, always prefer to see at least one rack against them. But such is life. So we have some, you know, discard. We always want turn one precise discard to um, 
to grab their Eidolon if they have one. And if we're on the play, then you know we can grab the Eidolon or the Goblin Guide or the Swiss Sphere. So. so I'm not super worried about him right now or her rather. I do have that victim. So hmm. Charm is annoying because that uh, that really that negates our kill spell if he holds it up, which he probably will. So, I, mm, but then he has two. I, I think Swiss Fair like seems pretty obvious. Yeah. Can't really have two of those running around. Uh, it's annoying though, it's, I really hate the indestructibility. Just trying to think about like what he would do. Like kind of get rid of both of these and then get rid of both of these with Victim and Lily, you know? That, that's sort of a plan. <coughs> or do I just get rid of this and hope for the best? I mean, I can, if I discarded one of them with the Thoughtsies and then let's say he makes it indestructible when I try to kill this. Um, with his other charm, then I'll just get rid of it Lily the next turn. So that seems like the safest plan. Like he might not even hold up mana, you know. So so we desperately need to draw a rack. Well, not desperately, I guess, but well, yeah, kind of desperately. He's got two borrow charms, and if he uses them both on me, then oh, he has that. Uh, he has a green source now. Yep, okay, this is sweet. Uh, yeah, that's a mistake. Well, not necessarily, but it puts me in a great spot, so. And now we got Nyx coming up. Uh, so he has a, what, Boris Trim? And a Bolt in hand. So that puts me at 10. That puts me at 6. That's brutal. I'm just gonna just take the fucking Boros drum, but I kind of I kind of wish I'd done that actually, because I prevent like effectively two damage, and then I put this into play, and then I can definitely play my three drop next turn, and blah blah blah. I probably should have done that. But it's too late now, so we'll save ourselves what two damage, maybe potentially four. Not four. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Two damage. Just kind of praying for a uh, for a swamp or mutable. I guess it's not a huge hurry. He's he's up to four cards now, so. But you know, casting things on time is always better. So he's Boris Charm and a mystery card. I believe. So now I can force this charm into his hand. Not a terrible play, but not really where I want to be. I get rid of one of his spells though, so instead of taking seven, I'm going to take three or four, so that's very good. Yep. Yep. And now... Oh shit, I forgot about the Rick Bolt. I always do that. Now I'm down to six, and I've got this Nixithid, so he's got, you know, he can kill me, and potentially next turn. That's very, very, very bad. So I've got a. He definitely has the edge, but uh, I've got. I've got this Nixithid, so that's a thing. Hopefully he draws nothing but creatures and lands. That would make me very happy. I got this lily to make sure this always stays. Uh, six six or seven seven. So just lines up so well against burn. Like I said, it's not perfect all the time. Like right now, it's suboptimal, but it's still pretty 
right, right. I do need to, you know, I would like to get this win. Burn games are almost always very tense. Yep, there we go, fine. I, I don't know if I would have... So what do I do? Definitely no Thotsies. Do I... Mm, I definitely Lily. The question is... Do I minus two? I think I do, because I want to close this out as soon as possible. And, I mean, he can, if I plus one, he's, he either has something that he'll pay in response, um, or he doesn't, and I don't know. This makes him a little weaker, but, you know. So I guess, and if his plan, his plan is obviously like, I'll put up a blocker and buy myself some time, and I'm just saying fuck you to that, so. Usually, if uh, you can see that your opponent has kind of, you know, uh, taking like a Hail Mary uh, attempt, then you should capitalize on that. So I'm leaning toward me right now. That Goblin Guide was a great draw for me. It's an extra nice. Yeah, I'll wrench mind, I imagine. Or maybe I'll just plus one. Oh, sweet. Um, I think I'll just wrench mind. There's no reason not to, because she's just going to plus one every turn. Hopefully it's not. Oh, fuck yeah, I got it. Oh yeah, I totally have it. I don't think he can. Oh, that's it. Shit. I thought he had more more health. Oh, that's beautiful. So there we go. Three one. Excellent. <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention to his health. I thought it was it was gonna be two swings. Um, yeah. So you can like I even underestimated the power of Nexus there. You can see just how crazy he is. He really does win the game like crazy fast. Like between their fetches, since it seems like almost every list now is uh, running fetches. It used to be a lot less. Um, but they're they take a lot of damage and normally that doesn't matter for them But I think when you have a card like this uh, it starts to really matter and then if we get a bunch of racks You know we side in our eighth one uh, oh, It just works out great. I didn't even have any racks that game. I, I don't think so uh, Unless I'm forgetting but Anyway, yeah great card You saw it uh, was it two games uh, against burn? Uh, it just it did the job so very happy uh, siphon life also great you can see like let's say I didn't have Nyx uh, then if I had siphon life instead that also would have done it they can't <coughs> once you're in top deck mode that, like that's it so uh, if you're at about six then you go up to eight and then ten and then you know or you can do every other turn uh, or if you have a deck more than you can do that every turn then there's just you know Pretty much nothing they can do, and two of these together can be nice even sometimes. So anyway, yeah, another another three one. Uh, I was on quite a mean losing streak there for a while. That's why I, you know, I had a lot of videos for a while, and then I didn't have much. Um, it was like I lost. I just had unlucky games versus burn once or twice, and uh, I played against that amulet deck twice. I think maybe three times, and every time. Uh, they lay lined uh, game two. They, I think they won game one, or it was close. I think one time they won game one, and then second time I lost a lay line, and then another game I won game one. Sec, and then the next two games I lost a lay line. Uh, I think like the problem with them is that like against other decks that sometimes bring in lay line. Um, we can they are slower decks i guess they're a bit grindier stuff like that sometimes i don't know sometimes not but um so it's either that 
you know, it's with Amulet, it's too fast. The ley line plus its speed is just we can't do it. Almost always, like it, it's just yeah. Um, like our alternate plan of pack rat and um, you know, praying for uh, them to play enough cards in this, then for us to get them into a lock with Lily is um, <coughs> it just doesn't work against them almost ever. Um, and then. Like the other decks that bring it in, uh, like Auras comes to mind, uh, and we're s often fine against it if they play it because we have Bridge, and Bridge is amazing against them, and they have a bit of removal for it, but it's just a bit, and often we can discard it, or we have two Bridges, or whatever, so like, that's not a big problem, but uh, um, Bridges, uh, it's not good against them because they have the uh, they seem to have a fair amount of removal for it, I'm not sure maybe it's just a few cards maybe it's the same as uh, Auras, but in either case um, they they have the Hive Mind backup plan which is in, like very good against us uh, although Slider Pack doesn't, doesn't work against us so that's nice, but they have you know four Summoner's Packs or whatever and they can tutor for them and this and that. Like it's just, it's it's a really rough match. I I mean, I only played it twice, but it really felt like. Whew. I mean, if they don't pull the ley line, they only run three, and even if they ran four, there's still like a, I think it's like a twenty-something percent chance of not seeing it in your opener. Um, it's you know, it's pretty brutal. They can hard cast it too sometimes. So, yeah, it's pretty nasty. I mean, we do have the advantage of Lily, but. You know, if they drop their prime time, um, we can play their Lily, but that's another thing. They've started running uh, Kelny Garden. You guys may have seen that at the recent Pro Tour. Specifically to deal with Lily, like if they... Because they go all in on prime time, and if they don't have another creature, then it's easy enough for, you know, a field tool of Lilianas to kind of decimate the deck. They go all in on it, past turn turn, drop the Lily, minus two, and then they gotta start over. But now they run this, which is very clever. Um, and now <coughs> now our Lily plan doesn't work against them half the time, so yeah, it's it's a pretty brutal matchup and it seems to be pretty common. Maybe it'll die down. I don't know. Maybe it'll ban something. I don't think they will. Maybe. I don't know. But um, mm, I think more likely the metal will just adapt to it or whatever, but I feel like we don't we don't really have options to adapt. I think it's sort of like Tron, and we just kind of take it. So I don't know if it proves really popular, then that could be a reason to not run eight rack uh, for a while. Um, it's also the other problem, and uh, one of the decks I've been losing to is that new junk deck with uh, with Leaf Liege. this you know this this effect we hate this effect they run like three or four of these and three or four locks on smiter like it's just ugh. there are times when it's fine but like when you turn one um, Raven's crime or turn to uh, range mine um, then you know you need a bridge or you just straight up lose and then a lot of the time you play the bridge and they just destroy it it's you know, it's very difficult. We can handle, like, a card or two like this, like, here and there. Like, some decks will run it as, like, I don't know, like a one, two, three, or four of. That can be okay. Like, the odds are not against us, necessarily. Um, but if you're running, like, six to eight of these effects, that's just, it's almost hopeless, you know, for us. So, if uh, Amulet and that Junk deck prove you know, uh, they earn their spot and they stay. Well, I guess Amulet kind of has, but I'm still not 100% convinced that it's going to stick around, because there was some hype around it before and it died down, so. Um, and Blood Moon really does just wreck it, so if enough people run Blood Moons, then, you know, the deck will probably go down in popularity and then come back up once people stop running Blood Moon, and on and on it goes. Um, but yeah, if that, if that sticks around, and if that new Junk deck 
sticks around, then it's, uh, that maybe, you know, we may end up back in pretty much the position we were in when, uh, Treasure Cruise and Dick, Th Dick Through Time were, were big problems, and even Pod, you could consider that, um, you know, that was not, again, not a, uh, but I recommend playing the deck in, and I didn't for the most part for almost all of it, so it, it could be, you know, we may have to wait for some unbans to even things out. Maybe they would make things worse for us or better. I don't know. We'll have to see. But anyway, tentatively, I can recommend still playing the deck. But I think just be wary that these are, uh, at the moment, they seem to be a significant enough percentage of the meta and a big enough problem for us that we should, you know, be on our toes, be worried, and, you know, be wondering if we should drop the deck for a while, you know, potentially. Uh, I didn't run into any of them today, fortunately, so that's part of why I, definitely part of why I won today. Um, lucky for us, I mean, the other junk deck is, uh, the traditional junk deck is huge, uh, pretty huge, and that's a good matchup, and, um, burn, uh, we just saw you faced two burn decks, that's, that's another huge player, so they make up for, you know, our weakness in those, in the amulet and, uh, the other junk deck, the, like, hate bears junk deck, I don't know what the fuck you would call it, I wish people would come up with a name for it already, um, but, yeah, see what happens right now, though, I think it's acceptable to play, if I keep losing enough and I run into those decks enough, I may, you know, play something else for a while, We'll see. Or change the deck around. I don't know. I, I feel like I can't really think of a splash that fixes those matchups. So, if you guys have ideas, I'm totally open to them, but you know. For now, I feel like this is what's best, and yeah. So, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time.